What do you have to say to the folks in Ohio, East Palestine, who are suffering right now? Well, I'd refer you to about a dozen interviews I've given today, and uh, if you'd like to arrange a conversation, uh, make sure to reach out to our press office, but I'm not have that conversation with you. Just walk you don't have a message here. for them? I do, and I shared it with the press many times today. I'd refer you to those comments. Are you going down there? <clears throat> What's up? Are you going down there at all? Um, yep, yeah, I am. When are you going? Uh, I'll share that uh, when I'm ready. Okay, I'll talk thank down the you. Can I, get a, can I get a photo? Yeah. Just in case you didn't hear what Secretary Mayor Pete Buttigieg asked this reporter, he asked her, could he get her picture? That is definitely out of order. A bureaucrat or an elected official should not ask a reporter that in that way. That is pretty threatening. Now, look, I'm no fan of the day the caller whatsoever, not at all. But this has nothing to do with whether or not I am a fan or he is a fan. He probably ain't a fan of the day the caller and hell, I don't blame him. But this is a reporter, Jeannie Tayer, asking him about his response to the crisis. And that is what reporters do. And quite frankly, when you are in the public limelight as either a bureaucrat or currently elected official, you got to answer to the public. And look, she was very respectful. He might not have liked the questions. It may have been an inopportune time, but I've seen reporters be much like rude. And this reporter was not rude. She just simply said, hey, you're going down there. When you going down there? Him having an excuse about he on private time. No, you, you don't have private time. And then especially when something like this is happening, he knows good and daggone well the reporter's gonna be lurking. Like my three-year-old knows that. My three-year-old grandson, he knows that. Okay, because he's extraordinarily brilliant. And this grown A man who knows that this is happening and that it is in the national limelight for good reason, is acting like he's surprised that a reporter asked him some questions. And I've seen people be ambushed. This wasn't even an ambush. She just simply asked when, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'll, I'll let you know when and I didn't answer this. She said, are you gonna answer this for this, this, our, us, our outlet? That was a fair question. Again, he might not have liked it. It may have been an in opportune time for him. I will give him that much, but baby, you're on. He, Jackson, the man acting like he don't know he's on. He was so pompous about the whole thing too. Well, I mean, he, he was acting like a man who don't be doing nothing all day at the job. You know hey. what I'm saying? Like he, like he don't really, like he just kind of there and you know, his staff kind of handles whatever those matters are um, according to protocol, according to whatever the manual says. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, Buddha Judge got that job for helping Joe Biden cross the finish line. So yeah. it's not like he's like always been ambitious to do that. You know, it's just a, an opportunity that he got. And he absolutely has future presidential ambitions. So he's gonna have to think about these types of things better because I, I won't say that someone like Pete Buddha Judge can't become president in America. But if he wants to, especially moving forward, he's going to have to definitely think about these kinds of things better. But then again, he's just kind of a corporate career politician. So yeah, this is, is what right. we should expect. Yeah. You know, this kind of reminded me, but he was a little more respectful to uh, uh, Jenny than he was. But there was a moment in 2020 where the African American community, some in the African American community in South Bend were unhappy. And he was at a public event, it seemed like a rally or something. And he was asked by an African American woman, you know, what, you know, I'm not happy with you, I'm, I'm not voting for you. She was just really upset. And she said to him, I'm not voting for you. And I'm paraphrasing all of this, but people can look it up and get the exact, I'm not voting for you. And instead of him saying, you know, ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, you know, maybe we can have a sidebar after this again. I've been. I get it. As a public official, if somebody has been elected to office, I get it. Sometimes people can take you there. Trust me, I get it. So I'm not saying this is somebody who has not experienced some of these scenarios. But she said, "You look, hey, I ain't voting for you." And instead of him saying, "Ma'am, you know, let's talk about it. I, I understand. I hear you. Maybe we can get a pull aside afterwards. I would love to hear your concerns." This dude says to her, "I ain't asking for you to vote for me." That's what he said. To this woman, yeah, now, he might have yeah. felt that he might have been thinking that in his head, but you don't say that, and especially with the type of reputation that this dude had among many in the black community in that city, it wasn't good. 
It was not good at all, but that was his privilege speaking. I ain't asking you to vote for me. I mean, that seemed like, you know, you wanna take this to the streets. It is totally inappropriate. So he's continuing this behavior. So his gall and audacity for Mayor Pete to act in that manner, it, it just doesn't make sense. It is totally unacceptable for a public official. And not to mention that he should have been on the ground for day one. See, sisters and brothers, family, friends, if the dude had been on the ground from day one, or at least not day 18, he ain't even on the ground, but talking about going there 18 days later, then he they would have to find something else to ask him. But since he made it very easy for, for them to ask him, hey, where you been? He made this easy for them by having a cavalier attitude about the suffering and the pain of the people in these communities, whether it's Pennsylvania or Ohio. He too haughty about it. He too cool, calm and collected about other people's suffering. And that indeed is the problem. Look, that reporter could have been rougher, she wasn't. Oh yeah, yeah. But he couldn't yeah. handle that. So he, he definitely ain't gonna be able to handle And you're right, Jackson, this was payback for dropping out of the race. We have said this on Unboss ad nauseum. These are the facts. Some neoliberals might not like it. And guess what? Yeah, absolutely, he is angling to run again. There's no doubt about it, but woo, this stuff is gonna come back up when he oh, does yeah. jump in. And on top of, of it all though, Jackson, what really got me is he has to take her 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 picture and that is in, inappropriate and is dangerous. It was pretty, it, it was it was intimidating too. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Just the position he's in. Cause if you're in any position like that, then you know, you have the ability to mess up people's lives rather easily. That's because, exactly right. You just feel like it. Um, That's it. But you know, I, I think that um, whether it's East Palestine or any, any situation like this for the position that Pete's in, um, this is literally what his job is. He's supposed to be on it. He's supposed to be very loud and vocal about it. And yeah. so again, it's interesting for people who want to run for president. It's like, you're, you're just really not going about this the right way at all, so. No, <laughs> and he couldn't handle the pressure here. You couldn't handle uh, 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 Jenny from the Daily Caller. You think yeah. you're gonna be able to handle the pressure of the job. Hell, he can't even handle the pressures of being the transportation secretary because clearly he is in over his head. But it does seem like the public pressure is getting to him in other ways. Put up this headline, Buttigieg pressured into promising to do his job finally. And again, all shout outs go to the lever for really getting this roller coaster ride started in terms of accountability and pounding and pounding and pounding. And I will also give credit to other independent media outlets. Unbossed is one, TYT is one, you know, just really putting it out there. But the lever continued. After pretending to be powerless, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is now taking, talking tough and promising new railroad safety rules. Now, talking tough, we're gonna see if he's gonna follow through with any of this, because it took him long enough to get to this position and too long. He was dragging his feet on this knowing that some of what has happened in these respective communities will have lifelong implications. The man was just too cavalier. He had a callous indifference to their suffering. 